I'll show you what the plan is for today. So the plan is to come out of the bay, you can see it's anchored there, and head north and then northwest along the top end of Kawuya. Kawuya. I don't know. And uh, we're heading up to um, a little bay up there that's not on our sailing guide. Um, but it does look uh, fairly well charted and Navionic shows the history of a couple of vessels anchoring there in the past. So we're just ghosting out of the anchorage now, making two and a half knots, or nearly. A very light breeze, seven knots on the beam there. And it's beautiful and calm in here. We're going to head out in that direction there, that's where the, um, that's where the harbour entrance is. That was our anchorage for the night, look how calm it was. And the sun's just peeking its head over. I'm going to have to put a shirt and some sunscreen on pretty fast. It gets damn hot here quick. But I love being able to not use the engine for a while. Uh, we've used it way too much in the last three or four days. I hate using that engine. Oh, Your coffee. here comes my team coffee. coffee. Thank you, beautiful. Coffee. Did find a little bit of wind. About uh, 10 knots, so uh, we're on a slight beat, probably about 60 degrees onto the wind. We're fighting a tide, our destination is actually around that point you can see there, but we're having to offset about 30 degrees uh, to beat the current that's running down through this passage here. Uh, whether we win that game in the end, I don't know. At the moment we're winning, but that could change. We've only got about well, five or six five or eight miles to go and I think we would be clear of the, uh, the tidal influence here so yeah it should be going we're making about three and a half knots against that tide even though through the water we're probably doing closer to five five and a half so we're losing maybe a knot and a half two knots to the tide but we are, we are winning so we'll leave the engine off while we can as we move further west now, uh, west of Alor, east and Alor west, and uh, towards uh, Flores Island, we've still got a few little islands to go, but as we go, we're finding more and more sandy beaches, more and more depths that we possibly could anchor in, you know, where you're looking at 20 to 25 metres rather than above that. There's apparently a live volcano just here off our port side shrouded in cloud at the moment but yesterday we saw some smoke coming out the top that was pretty cool let's uh, have a look at this just beautiful the color of the water here is stunning because it's so deep and there's no silt it just takes on that really deep iridescent blue the kind of blue that you just don't see in shallow water shallow water you kind of get a green a turquoise kind of color but here in this deep water where a thousand plus meters it's just stunning color just beautiful we're almost clear of the strait now so uh, we're starting to get out of that tidal influence and uh, we're making about four knots over the ground but probably five and a half to six through the water uh, but we're just starting to break free of that tide so we won that little fight we're very happy with that in the meantime, we're just going to sail along here to our destination. Secretly, I've got in mind that we might go to the next one. Depends on how much uh, how much ground we can make. I don't want to tell Tarn yet until I'm sure. But it would be nice to get to the next destination and do a longer trip today if we can, especially while the wind is in. So we were making our approach to the headland at a place called Balurin. We've had a good sail today. Um, we've managed to sail 35 miles with a nice noise breeze, probably about 10 knots. It's got up to about 15 at one point. Anyway, we're headed into Balurin, which is this little bay here. The problem is I don't trust my charts, because so far I've seen, you know, inaccuracies, wildly inaccurate. Showing depths of 20 meters inside there. Uh, if we can find that, but I've seen that before and I've also, you know, depths more like 50 and 60 metres even though it's charted at 20. So 
the uh, inaccuracies here are staggering. Anyway, we're going to head inside. The entrance itself looks like, although it's not marked, um, looks fairly straightforward and should be very visible in this uh, afternoon. It's only 1.30, so we've, the reef should be very visible. And we'll go in and we'll see if we can find some depths to anchor because we'd like to have a good night's sleep tonight. If there's no suitable depths, we're going to have to head back out, set sail and just sail all night. The problem for that is that we're going to have FADs and fishing boats everywhere and most of these FADs are not lit and they're huge. If we collide with one of those, we're going to end up with some damage for sure. So ideally we want to be anchored during the night and moving during the day so we've at least got a chance of seeing this stuff before we hit it. There's the uh, headland of Balurin behind that. So uh, we should be anchoring probably right where I'm pointing right there, camera right now, probably in about there behind this headland. So it should be nice and flat. The big question is can we get a depth that we can actually anchor in? Just running under the main at the moment as we come downwind. And uh, when we get to the entrance there, I'll round up, we'll start the engine and we'll motor in. There's no way I'm going to sail. There's the village of Balurin with the volcano in the background. The uh, reef entrance is not marked, uh, but it does look reasonably open, so we're still going to give it a shot. Uh, we're going to round up and get rid of the mainsail very shortly. And then um, start the motor and motor on in. I'm not an idiot, so we're not, we're not going to sail into an unknown anchorage. The big question is, will we get a depth that we are capable of anchoring in, you know, which really is a, not more than 25 metres, really. Maybe 30 at a pinch. Well, we're not going to know that until we get in there. If not, we're going to have to set sail and head back out again and just continue on through the night and uh, get as far away from these FADs as we can. So I know, I know I keep yapping on about having a beautiful Thai wife, but uh, the best part is just getting food cooked. So we've just anchored the boat here at, I've forgotten the name, Buri Lalam or something, Buri Lam. And uh, Tan's made one of my favorite meals in Thai. It's called son-in-law eggs, but the name is Pura? Palo. 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 Son-in-law eggs. Basically it's uh, pork with eggs and cinnamon and some green vegetables mm. and uh, I love it it's called son-in-law eggs because uh, historically speaking if the mother of the girl liked her boyfriend and wanted him to marry her she would make son-in-law <laughs> eggs so that he would like her so much that he would want to marry into the family so that's why they're called son-in-law eggs what? Did you know that? No. Ah, I remember someone told me that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah. But so, different from this one. Oh, I think so. Same, and then have another one different. Yeah, yeah. I do for you before one. I do one time before. Hmm. I think last year. But different from this one. But so we could be there. Oh, yeah. So these are awesome. Anyway, thank you, my love. Kiss me. 
Good morning, Starlight followers. We are leaving. Hang on, I've got to get the name again. We are leaving Ballerin. Ballerin, the harbour of Ballerin. Wasn't a bad night here. Uh, not a lot of room for a lot of boats. Maybe you get three boats in there. Um, but we're just passing out now. It's a little bit of a dirty old Indonesian port. Rubbish everywhere. People have been to Indonesia know what I mean. But the people are beautiful, really lovely. There's a loose connection somewhere in the NMEA bus on our uh, main chart plotter here and every now and then the GPS goes out. It just went out right at the really tight part of, the, uh, of this part of the uh, leaving the thing, leaving the harbour. But luckily it's just turned itself back on again. I've got the backup ready, um, but it's not as easy to navigate from as the main one because it doesn't react as fast. Anyway, we'll just go slowly, a couple of knots. It's starting to get busier now as we head further and further west uh, into the more populated areas of Indonesia. We're in the shadow of uh, the volcano Levitoba. And you can see there's a ferry passing in front. We've had FADs all morning, quite a few vessels. That's the largest one we've seen today, but they're just gonna get getting bigger and bigger, more and more frequent. Tan's checking the internet, just in case it goes away. <laughs> I guess maybe one day it's gone. So there you go. Beautiful day. We've got about 55 miles to go today. We're gonna go to, hopefully get to a place called Gedu, Gedu, uh, which has a nice beach uh, and monkeys that come down to the beach at night time apparently. That'd be pretty cool to see monkeys in the wild for the first time. I've seen them in Bali but they were just wild, I mean angry monkeys, they weren't, just, they weren't literally wild, they were just angry. Um, yeah, so it'd be kind of nice to see some actual monkeys living and doing what monkeys really do rather than monkeys that tourists feed with bananas and ice creams and cameras and jewellery. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 55 miles I guess, we've got about 40 to go. Let's continue going. Should be an easy day. The sea uh, map in the, nav in the Ray Marine chart plotter uh, has stopped working so I'm no longer getting detail uh, on my chart plotter, the main chart plotter. So before I'm having constant, well, I'm having irregular issues with the GPS dropping in and out. Uh, the GPS is working now, but all of a sudden now my charts have disappeared. Luckily, I've still got that backup uh, tablet with the uh, Navionics chart app on it. So if you're going to go long distance, the lesson here is make sure you've got two or three backups if you're not going to have paper charts on board. Uh, the paper charts I had all the way to Cairns, but after Cairns to get us all the way to Thailand I would be spending somewhere in the realm of about five to seven thousand dollars on charts and then I would have to store them somewhere so it's just not practical anymore to be carrying paper charts on board for long distance cruising. Uh, electronic is the only way to go. Of course then this stuff can fail. So we're down to the chart plotter on a you know broad scale and then down to the uh, tablet for the fine scar and my phone is the third final backup if that all goes to shit. I suspect that the uh, card has failed possibly in the heat of the tropics here because it is quite hot. Um, if that's the case then I can get a new one sent to me in Lombok maybe. Um, it's also possible that once things cool down tonight I take that uh, card out put it back in again it may just start working again who knows but uh, for the time being it will just uh, use the backup system for this long distance cruising there's always something giving you an issue almost every day I think just uh, it's a constant finger in the dike you know <laughs> stopping your boat from falling apart while you're underway anyway one more minor thing the time came up with the idea of getting a wet cloth uh, we had one that fit the size of the um, chart plotter 
and another one that fit beside the rest of the instruments. So we wet them and put them over the top. And then I put an additional T-shirt over the top of the um, chart plotter, um, which has brought that screen temperature right down. Um, and then once it was cool and dry, I opened up the uh, CMAP card port, I guess. Uh, popped the card out, put it back in, exited, went back in again and it loaded the chart. So the good news is the card is not screwed, um, but clearly it doesn't like the heat. So we're going to have to keep them uh, covered in the future, I guess, uh, in this hot tropical sun because it's just too much for the Ray Marine to handle. Anyway, uh, we're back in business. When you're doing long distance cruising, make sure that you've got uh, the very best first aid kit you can have and any medicine that you think that you might need. Uh, we're lucky that we were able to get some antibiotics to bring on board uh, just in case. Um, and Tan has uh, a lump in her tummy, an infection. Can show please, Tan? Oh. Oh, oh. So here. So we're not quite sure what it is. I think it's an insect bite. Tan thinks it's something else. Um, but it's come up and it's quite aggravating and uh, quite a lump inside there. So without an access to a doctor at the moment, we're a long way from anyone. Um, we pulled out the antibiotics and started her on a course of antibiotics yesterday lunchtime. So we're just going to pump those in until we can get to a doctor to have a look at it. Um, hopefully it'll go away by itself, but I suspect it's maybe a cyst or an abscess or something. I'm not a doctor. Um, and I suspect it's going to just keep getting worse. But with the antibiotics, I think we can at least hold it at bay. So make sure you're prepared, you know, um, go and see your, lo your local doctor. Have a talk to them about where you're going and what you're doing. Try and get some anti antibiotics at the very least uh, that you can carry on board. Anyway, we're using ours up now and it's a worthy mission. The last thing we want is, you know, a big infection with blood poisoning out here. We're at least two days away from the nearest doctor that I can find on, um, on Google Maps. So I'm hoping well, I'm pretty confident Tarn will be okay for a couple of days. Um, and maybe even then the antibiotics may kick in. Otherwise we're going to go all the way to Lombok, which is probably at least four days away if we didn't stop. And probably more like a week uh, with day stops in between. Yeah, so... There's always something going on. Always. A little uh, rain shower passing over us, giving us a little bit of breeze. Let us motor along at uh, seven and a half knots. It's nice when you can make a bit of round instead of losing it. There's the uh, rain shower coming out. It's not a particularly bad one, so I haven't bothered reefing. Uh, we'll just take advantage of it and uh, ride with it. If worst came to worst, I could always turn downwind. I've got plenty of sea room. Plenty of sea room down there to, to wear away if I had to, so we'll maintain while we can. Get a few extra miles out of it. We're motor sailing. We're making uh, about eight knots. This wind is going to drop out again very, very shortly. It's only temporary. So uh, just leave the engine on and make miles. Get to Anchorage uh, with more daylight. Behind me is the uh, northern tip of, or the northernmost point of Flores Island in Indonesia. So from here, as we move west, we're going to start to see a different sort of Indonesia, I think, uh, than what we've seen previously. It's still deep here, but there are accessible anchorages, whereas where we've come from between Sam Laki and here, it's been extremely difficult to find anchorages that are suitable. Um, and generally where there's a nice beach, it's just a sheer drop off. So uh, looking forward to getting into a bit of a change here. We're in about 500 meters of water it's crystal clear. The sun's been out all day. We've had virtually no wind. We sailed and motor sailed wherever we could. Um, but really, we've been running that engine for well, probably nine hours now. And I expect that we'll be probably running it for another two before we get to the anchorage that I have in mind for tonight. Well, feeling quite excited. We've uh, just sighted our first yacht uh, since we've left Darwin nearly three weeks ago. Um, all we've seen is local boats and locals. We haven't seen anything uh, from outside Indonesia. He's about, or was about five nautical miles away, but we're closing on him. Uh, he's going to the anchorage at Gidong by the look of it. 
Uh, he's just headed inside, so we're going to go past and uh, see if he looks like he's in a good anchorage. If he is, we might go in and, uh, and anchor as well. But the other notable thing is um, how green Flores Island is compared to the other islands further east from here. This is far more tropical Asian palm trees, coconuts, monkeys, that kind of thing uh, that I kind of expected Indonesia to be all the way through, which is really unreasonable because Indonesia covers, you know, thousands of miles, much like Australia does. You know, Tasmania has not looked the same as Northern Territory. So uh, hopefully we're now starting to move into a more tropical type environment. Yeah, really looking forward to Hopefully we can see this other yacht. You excited to see another yacht, baby? Yeah, sure. Yeah, look at Aussie Aussie with a zinc oh, on. Aussie, look at this. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 oi. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. And uh, this guy's gone and anchored in Gidong. And uh, he's on a lee shore there. I. He must know something I don't. But uh, anyway, I didn't like the look of that one little bit. Didn't answer the radio, it wasn't on AIS. Boat looked a bit wrecked. Anyway, uh, we're going to go on to the next anchorage. Uh, let me show you. So, this is the northeast tip of Flores. So, this is Gidong here, and we've just gone past that anchorage. We're going to go around the corner into these anchorages down the bottom here. That'll provide us protection from this nor nor west that's coming through at the moment. Uh, he's wide open and exposed up here. I just think that's not a good idea. So you might be curious what I use here. You won't be able to see me because it's dark. So I'm using the main chart plotter to uh, to get me on the target, I'm trying to stay as accurate as I can. Then on my phone, I've got an avionics running, so I'll be able to zoom in with their sonar chart, which is just basically a guesstimation of what's there they, they don't really know unless someone reports it and this is just a guesstimation based on the chart that we just saw on the main plotter and then I've also got Google Earth running on my tablet so I can see the satellite view of where we are and also where the reefs are so as long as all three agree I'm happy um, so that's kind of the goal here well we've anchored uh, in North Hating Bay uh, using that Google Earth and Avionics and the C-Map charts all at the same time in the pitch black. Turn on the bow with a spotlight and uh, watching the sounder as it came in. So we got in just fine, we're in a good spot. We anchored in about 20 meters of water. We probably could have snuck in just a little bit closer, but I'm happy with where we are here. We're definitely not gonna drag. Um, yeah, so Tarn's making up dinner. We're having uh, chicken and vegetable stir fry. Thank you, my love. Bon plan. You do a good job. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just going to chill and relax. And I think we may spend the day here tomorrow to explore and relax.